presentation on Promising Practices Network with William Dent and Rebecca Kilborn. Thank you. The mission of the Promising Practices Network is to provide reliable, evidence-based information to those practitioners and policymakers who are trying to improve the lives of children, youth, and families. One of Missouri, Missouri's famous, most famous citizens is attributed to having said, it's amazing what people can accomplish when they don't care who gets the credit. Those words by Harry Truman speak to the humble beginnings of the Promising Practices Network. In 1997, four states involved in similar collaborative work around kids and families came together in Colorado for something called a learning circle. They were there to share lessons learned about what was working in their states to improve the well-being of children and families. Part of their homework was to provide a policy brief noting strategies that worked, best practices. Summarizing research evidence was a strategy that they had all employed. Later in that discussion, they had discovered that the previous year together, they had spent nearly $400,000 to provide that service to their constituents. So on a long walk in the cool Colorado air, they decided then and there that it would be best for them to pool their resources and provide a venue to share research information across state lines. It wasn't about who got credit for the work, but about how best to accomplish the task. By then, the World Wide Web was an established technology, and they turned to it as a solution to share information to those needed, who needed it in a timely, cost-effective manner. In 1998, PromisingPractices.net began posting output of this collaboration. The network began to grow. Two years later, in 2000, they agreed to release an RFP to have someone else manage the pro operation of their project. They were seeking someone with research, outreach, and web hosting capabilities. RAND responded to that challenge. Dr. Kilburn? And five years later, Promising Practices Network continues to grow. In each of the last three years, the number of users and subscribers to our email listserv has grown by 25 to 30 percent. In addition, since the founding states allowed others to join the network, we've more than doubled the number of states and organizations who partner with our collaboration. And last, when the founding partners asked RAND to manage the project, the only content on the site was program reviews. Since then, in response to requests from our users and the network members, we've added sections on research study summaries, service delivery and management, and then last, state-specific pages that highlight hot topics that are currently important in each state. What hasn't changed in these five years is our commitment to a couple of core principles. First is the network wants to fill a very specific niche, and that is to provide evidence-based information that is objective. And RAND researchers and scientists from across the country screen all the information that goes on the site. Second, that the project responds to the needs of users and the network members. So everything from site architecture to the way that content is categorized is based on user surveys and interviews and input from our network members. So looking to the future, what have the users and network members asked us to do next? They've indicated a desire to have more peer-to-peer -peer information sharing opportunities, but at the same time, they said they didn't like chat rooms, they didn't like discussion boards and other technologies that existed. In the last year, an emerging technology on the internet known as Web 2.0 has provided another option. Sites, leading sites like MySpace.com, Kodak Gallery, eBay, Wikipedia, use technologies that allow users to interact differently with the web where they share information and exchange information with other users rather than just looking at information programmed by a web producer. So PPN replicates itself each time a new state joins the network, but we think that the PPN model could also be applied to any topic where research from across the country has relevance for a large number of localities. And law enforcement is one example, as is uh, emergency response and a number of others. 
The Promising Practices Network improves the well-being of Missouri citizens by providing a great return on investment. It does so by assisting decision makers in streamlining the time to call through mountains of information about child and family well-being, and thereby helping government be more effective and improving the lives of youth, children, and families. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, question time. Lee Shore. When you're dealing with a problem that can't be solved only with programs, but requires connections among programs, requires strategies, requires systems change, um, are you able to deal with that in the format that you now have, and how do you deal with going beyond programs? Right now, the current site structure um, doesn't respond to that type of need. So what we're doing right now is identifying and um, screening and translating research and evidence generally from the scientific literature. And it's really to address that exact type of need that we're exploring these new, um, what's it called user-based content approaches because, for example, in the last week, we got a request from a county government official in Florida who asked for information about how his peers around the country were conducting um, community uh, needs assessments in the following areas. And you know we don't have the capacity to say, regularly pool his peers around the country, but um, the type of technology used by Wikipedia and MySpace and others, where you have a community that's interacting in this way, could in fact answer those types of questions for for him. And and there's not really a space that's doing that for people, for professionals in the child and family services arena right now. So that's exactly the reason that we're exploring this as an option. Other questions here? I'm, I, can I just ask this question? I'm, I'm, <coughs> excuse my ignorance, but I'm still trying to figure this out. The people who are using the network are essentially professionals, this, not citizens in general. If, you're not, if you have a question about child rearing, you don't go on the network. Well, you certainly could, but in my case, uh, I represent practitioners a lot in Missouri. We have something called Missouri's Community Partnerships. There are 21 nonprofits around the state um, they used to be known as caring communities, but they, when they're seeking strategies around youth, children, and families, they will turn to PPN first to, to look at a strategy that, that will work or that has been proven to work. In, in, the, in the states that are, that are part of the network, right? Yes. Is, is this superior to what one might find on the web, just looking around generally on those issues? Well, we asked our users that in our um, October 2004 survey, and the, the value that they said they get out of the site is um, that if they enter a search term on our site, first of all, they don't get um, 2.4 million hits, and second, they know that the information has been, first of all, screened for credibility, and second, um, generally presented in a way that's um, succinct initially, but allows you an entree to get further information. Well, let's, let's say there's a best practice that's, not, that's outside the state network itself. So, Could so you repeat that? Let, let, let's assume there's some best practices in a particular field which are outside the state itself, the states that are belong to this. If one came on your network, would you find articles that would essentially draw your attention to and inform you on those questions? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that because um, our review process considers not just information from the nine states and organizations involved or just from RAND, but rather we use um, standards, standard methods and research synthesis to do comprehensive literature searches on a particular topic. And then in terms of the research summaries that we present on a regular basis, we scan essentially the entire publications and web universe to get that information. So it includes information from everywhere from um, the National Center for Education Statistics to Child Trend to the NEE Casey Foundation, the journal Pediatrics. So we have hundreds of regular outlets that we review on a regular basis for information that is within our topic purview. So that and a that, professional who doesn't live in your state area might also want to tune in. Yes, and in fact, um, we know one of the reasons that um, the founding partners decided to um, engage other states in the collaboration is the majority of users, frankly, are outside of the four founding states. And in fact, 
our most recent user survey indicated that um, almost 20% of our users were from outside the U.S. And can you give us some sense of the user population and how that's changed over the last couple of years? Um, sure. We've, we, um, we collect uh, dozens of statistics on our use each week, and I won't go through each of them right now, given the hour, but um, the, the ones that we really focus on are, are three. And one of them is um, unique visitors per month. And so, and, and that's a filtered number. What we do is we identify um, individuals um, who are different people who are coming to the site, and they're only counted once. And we screen out, um, so we screen out things like search robots. Okay. We screen out people who work at RAND. We screen out Bill and Bill's colleagues and other network members and other people like funders who are involved in the project. So. Um, in the last, the last month we had information available, we're just about to break through the 10,000 individuals a month barrier. 10,000 new individuals a month. Well, those are, those are unique visitors in that month. So they might have come multiple previous times, month. right? But, and then another type of indicator is just hits. So a lot of people say, wow, 10,000, that's not very, we get so many hits. Well, our number of hits per month is about 150,000 hits per month. Let's see. Very helpful. Any other questions here? Well, thank you both.